Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. You get fairy dust, I get fairy dust, Amelie gets fairy dust. And it's time for another Codependent No More video by Melody Beatty. I am on chapter four, Codependency Characteristics, and page 48. And we are now going to talk about anger. Okay, so many codependents feel very scared, hurt, and angry. And you can see how that's like a little loop. So we'd feel scared about the chaos or the drinking or whatever we're, de we're dealing with or the cycle of abuse. And then we get hurt by it. And then we get mad about it. Um, and I'm gonna talk about if you don't feel mad <laughs> in a second, but um, you know, and when I say mad, like, so for me, who, if you ever asked me if I was ever angry, I would have said no. Um, the anger would be at myself for causing it, or the anger would be, again, nine times out of 10 directed toward myself, or the anger would be, um, why he said he wasn't going to do that, but he did it like, like that, like mad about the you know, the words versus the actions or whatever, but not gonna express that anger, of course. I mean, please. Um, we live with people who are very scared, hurt, and angry. Addicts are as well. Um, are afraid of their own anger. Okay, yeah. So it just never felt, it, it's not that it never felt like anger was an option. It wasn't, but it never really felt that way. What it really felt like was um, that I had suppressed it so much that I didn't feel it. So, um, another way you can say it since I am a food addict is that I ate my anger. I shoved my anger down with copious amounts of food. So, um, are frightened at other people's anger always think people will go away if anger enters the picture, which is why we suppress it, which is why we don't allow it, which is why we convince ourselves and talk, our, talk ourselves out of um, our anger or that we're just being overreactive or overthinking it or, you know, or what's wrong? Why can't I have empathy? That's usually mine. Like, you know, they're doing their best and making excuses so we can disperse and get rid of our anger. Think other people make them feel angry. Very true. Um, if that person would just stop drinking, like, I'm so mad, I, that person just needs to stop drinking or that person needs to stop using or that person needs to stop doing that thing that they always do or being unreasonable or shaming me or whatever it is. But see, we attract each other at our level of mental health. And so we have a part in this. There's a reason that we're staying. There's a reason that why we're connected at this level of mental health. And so we automatically only get, again, this is not really true, true, but it, but if we are angry, we're angry at the other person and not taking responsibility for our choices that keep us here in this um, terrible predicament. Um, I will say again, for me, a fawn mode person um, would would mostly take the responsibility of the anger. It's it's my fault and I shouldn't be this way or I shouldn't do it so it's pushing it down. But you can see a fight mode person would be like fighting with the other person. You're the reason, you're the reason. Um, repress our angry, anger, of course, with food. Um, you may have heard me say this somewhere before, but one of the things I figured out is uh, a lot of codependent, not all, but a lot of codependents are unhappily overweight, like they wish they weren't. And one of the, and, and also um, childhood trauma people, Pete Walker talks in his book about eating being a comfort for a lot of us. And, and so one of the things I figured out is like, oh shit, 
and it actually happened in a session <laughs> um, uh, of where I was a therapist where I was like, oh, she eats his consequences. Like that's the, the thing is that that person eats the other person's consequences. And then I realized, then I applied it globally. And I was, I was in the boat as well. I eat other people, I've eaten other people's consequences. And if I'm gonna do that, I actually need food to eat to symbolize that. So, um, feel controlled by other people's anger. Of course, we're walking, that's where the term walking on eggshells comes from. Um, cry a lot, get depressed, depressed is mine, not necessarily crying a lot. Um, overeat, get sick. Um, do mean and nasty things even to get even act a hostile or have violent temper outburst mine usually went to passive-aggressive shit um, but you can see fight mode people would um, lash out have been ashamed for feeling angry oh my god like just felt so not like allowed like how dare I um, and, and an example of that is like, if I were to complain about a family member, just, this is just an example, I'm not talking about my family, but like, let's say the father, um, I, 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 father does something, I get angry at the father, and then when I do, how dare you? I put this roof over your head, you're nothing with a, so like so you would be like punished for anger which again if if you don't have anger for any reason <laughs> uh something's amiss because anger is one of our feelings and we get to have anger um anger is healthy anger is actually healthy there's a lot of shit that happens where anger is the appropriate response we're not wired that way and that is sad, but we get to recover anger as well. Um, place guilt and shame on themselves for feeling angry. So you see how that would happen. If you hear that a lot, like how dare I, then you think, I, how dare I, how dare I feel anger? Um, feel increasing amounts of anger, resentment, and bitterness. There is no other choice if this is the life we choose. The codependency life, it is a life of anger, resentment, and bitterness and again the anger toward inward um just un endless numbers of resentments uh feel safer with their anger than with their hurt feelings that's some, that's the case in a lot of cases again maybe more of a fight mode person um but uh hurt feelings worked for me like i just i would just stay there wonder if they'll never not be angry yes um, that's the last one. Let me say one more thing about anger and how it manifested in me as a fawn response person is that, well, for one, again, it's like, it's like, Elizabeth, are you angry? No, no, not at all. Binge and purge, binge and purge, binge and purge. I'm not angry at all. <laughs> like, I mean it, right? Um, but there's, there's another thing that we do and we, we do it. In, in, in one of two ways. So, so um, there's a term called spiritual bypassing. So the person acts out and is mean action. Let's say that father, that father hits me, let's say. And then the appropriate response would be like anger, anger. Let me, let me not do that because I want to use Oh, oh yeah, okay, I got, I got it, sorry, sorry. So, you know, it takes a bitch a minute sometimes. Um, it's a line. So, so it's, um, action. Father did bad thing. Um, me, anger, how dare you? And then whatever problem would be resolved, right? If that's healthy, right? But what we do is dad does bad thing. Here's anger right here. Oh no, no, no. Dad had a bad childhood. Dad was, his work, work is so hard. He does, he, it's too hard for him. Like dad is, you know, so we immediately, instead of actually feeling the feeling, we're like, -ba -ba -do 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 -do. let's go around that feeling. Let's go around it. We don't want to have it. So all is well because poor thing, he had a bad childhood. And here's the thing. It's not just, that may be true. He, he, he did have a shit childhood. 
and it's his responsibility to handle that and change it, not the child's. And so um, when you say, like, he had a bad childhood, yes, and I can still feel angry at him. My dad had a bad childhood, and I'm angry at the thing that he just did to me. So um, beware, beware. Oh, one of two ways, so that's one way. And the other way is um, Jesus wouldn't want me to be angry. Like, God, I'm a bad whatever, fill in the blank religion. I, I, I shouldn't, I should forgive him. I should forgive him for hitting me. I should forgive him for calling me mean names. I should forgive him. And that's true too. And we'll do that. So, so forgiveness is a way to spiritual bypass. It's not real forgiveness because you know, you're gonna hold a resentment. The clean way is to, um, dad does this thing, I have a resentment. So on the advanced bitch festo, advanced bitches have a zero resentment life. But dad did a bad thing, I have a resentment. I have to heal my resentment. I have to look at those things. I have to unhook myself. And when I do that, I will automatically have forgiven. You know, I will forgive him. Doesn't mean you forget. And, and when I say forget, I don't mean like I'll forgive but forget because that's has, has passive aggressive feels to it. It's more that um, I'm not gonna go unconscious to the bad behavior. So again, like, so we can forgive people but never have lunch with them again. You know, we can forgive people but not allow them to treat us like shit. There's a lot of people that I have forgiven fully, fully, heartful, bless them. I wish for them the happiness that I have, right? Like that, that level of forgiveness. But a lot of them, I, I truly would never love to see again. <laughs> I bless them in their life. Namaste. Like, please have, I want you to have all the joy in the world. And I'm not gonna surround myself with people that have done that to me. You have lost privileges to deal with this bitch. Like you have lost privileges. So um, beware of forgiveness. It's fake forgiveness. It's forgiveness bypassing. Mm -mm. There's also the, the religious bypassing, spiritual bypassing. No, 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 no. We actually have to feel the feeling. That's our work, that's advanced. We have to feel the feeling. Are we going to get to forgiveness? Yes, but maybe not today. We're, we're, it's a, we're a work in progress and we've got to figure that out. And we have to do it. I'd, I'd rather be angry for one second or angry for a few seconds, whatever, angry. Like this thing has happened and it's not okay. Than to, you know, pour like pink paint over it so that I don't have to, um, feel that like no 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 the advanced thing is to feel that and then go through the process of having it all lift from you so I, I hope that was helpful um, anger is definitely in there again a lot of us don't feel it at all like at all if you to ask me today are, are you angry about any of the shit that happened I would say no <laughs> and some of it is because it's truly been lifted but the other is it's just you know, it's gonna be, for me, it's gonna be the last thing. For a lot of you who are fight mode, who've like the, got the little rebel in you, for you, it, it might be there and, and rightfully so. There's not one trauma response that's better or more healthy than the other. These are trauma responses. This is a human response to childhood trauma. And so I want you to, if, if fight mode is your issue, if you are walking, talking anger, there is hope for you as well. And I recommend doing the 12 steps of um, either Al-Anon or Codependence um, Anonymous. Like you, you get to heal from this. I truly, 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 you, you don't have to be angry all the time anymore. And it, it's gonna be hard not to be hooked to get to the anger place. Um, and so for you, it's more and a therapist. So, so, um, and, and I think you can now interchange 
anger issues, anger management, to flight, fight trauma response issues, fight trauma response um, management. This is about childhood trauma. It's not about your fucking anger. Like, so you, and you're doing nothing wrong by feeling angry, but I have a feeling a lot of us are not fight mode people. And again, no, no, there's not one that's better than the other. We, we gravitated to the one that suited our personality and to the one that would be safest in our home, the one that guaranteed our fucking survival. So wherever you fall on this anger issue, know that it is really, 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 really um, okay. I have one more thing to say, sorry. Sorry, 15 minutes, sorry. One more thing to say, it might be helpful about this anger thing. So in grief, anger is one of the stages, right? And so a lot of people, a lot of my clients who come to me for grief, you know, I don't feel angry and I didn't feel angry. And so one time I had a dog that died and because I'm psychologically minded, I was interested in seeing my families um, when my kids were little, uh, seeing their, I was interested in seeing their grief stages, right? Um, and I was just thinking, like I saw bargaining, I saw this, I saw that in myself and with others in my family and I thought, um, of course the lawnmower is sorry, 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 let me finish. Um, so, so, um, I thought, but you know what? I'm not angry. I'm not angry at all. I'm not angry. And then like a few days later, and, and I thought I was advanced for not being angry. Right. And, and then, um, <laughs> this is almost comically ridiculous. Oh God, I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, that I, my kid couldn't find his shoe, my little son. And I was like, where is it? And I like was so scared by my anger. I put closed the door between me and my son. Cause I'm like, what the fuck is happening to me? This is not my normal response to a kid uh, who can't not find his shoe. <laughs> and so I realized that anger for a lot of us who can't just say, I'm angry at this, that, or the other, cause I can't, I usually can't spot the anger is that it, it comes in like, where are my keys? You know, it comes out in, in almost innocuous ways that make us look fucking crazy. But I, I don't, I didn't want you to get away without knowing that that's another way that our anger seeps out if we don't manage it. Okay. Love you. Bye.